broadcasting from our studio in Boston, Solutions Review is proud to showcase Software One in the Solution Spotlight, an inside look at enterprise technologies. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review, and welcome to this Solution Spotlight featuring Software One and focused on how to do more with AI, Microsoft 365 Copilot in action. Today, we're going to dive deeper into Microsoft 365 Copilot with this hands-on look at how it all works. We will explore the innovative ways Copilot can streamline your workflows, enhance your daily tasks, and ensure your data remains protected. And we will shine our spotlight on Software One's expert services designed to support you and your AI journey and help you leverage the full potential of Microsoft 365 Copilot. This presentation contains a treasure trove of practical insights, so I will hand it over to the folks at Software One, LaShawn Rowe, Microsoft Modern Workplace Specialist, and Aaron Nush, Services Director. Aaron, how's it going today? It's going very well. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to digging into talking and more about some Copilot here uh, in, in the coming moments. Absolutely. I'm excited because Copilot is definitely a new productivity tool that every organization can potentially look at integrating within their systems and streamlining the process and also enhancing performance in everyday tasks. I like to think that we're going to take productivity to the next level with applications we're already using today, such as Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel. Those things can be easily integrated with Copilot. And, and Aaron, my first question is, you know, what is Microsoft 365 Copilot? Because Microsoft has an array of Copilot. So what is it? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, as, as you mentioned, Microsoft does have a wide ecosystem of various co-pilot products, and they're each targeted to um, help organizations through some specific uh, use cases or areas. Um, we have on, on the website, you know, co-pilot that's built into being an, an edge to help with um, web content and, and some task completion, some Q&A. Um, on the Windows OS side, there, there's co-pilot built into the operating system to help provide some functionality and better interaction there. When we looked across the, the wide uh, array of different applications, when we look at dynamics, we've got some of the co-pilots for sales and services. When we look at security, there's a security co-pilot that can help with threat detection, identification, mitigation. GitHub and Power Platform even have co-pilot capabilities to help uh, with better code development, better creation of apps and workflows. Um, but when we talk about Microsoft 365 co-pilot, it's really focusing around some of those applications for productivity that you were referencing earlier. Um, some of the core pieces of what we know is Office 365, Microsoft 365, with Word, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, et cetera, um, where we're, we're really making our lives and, and our day-to-day -day, um, uh, productivity better um, through some of the capabilities that Copilot provides. No, that's that's great. Thank you for explaining it that way. And I, I, I think just based on some of the things that we hear today, people are looking to take productivity to that next level. So tell me, how does Microsoft 365 Copilot work? Yeah, so, so Microsoft 365 Copilot takes a lot of the functionality that, that many of us are, are already familiar with and used to based on a lot of the different um, AI capabilities that are out there in, in, in the wider ecosystem, but specifically applies that into um, our own dedicated Microsoft 365, Office 365 environments, where we're able to apply some of those methodologies and capabilities to our own corporate data, um, while wrapping around the layer of corporate security that we already have come to, to, to appreciate um, through our Microsoft 365 investments in ecosystems already. Um, so when, when we take a step back and look at it, out in, in the public internet, there's going to be a lot of different AI tools that are available where we can go and, and have it create documents and analyze data and do some of the things that are similar to what we see in Copilot for Microsoft 365. But when we look at the Microsoft 365 Copilot specifically, it, it is looking at the data that is within our environments um, it's looking at it on a per user level. So if I were to go and, and, and ask Copilot to help me um, gather information or summarize data or, or tell me about a particular project, it's going to look at all of the data in, in my company's environment through the lens of me. Um, I have different security permissions than you may have, LaShawn, or that other members of our team may have. 
and it's not going to expose any data to me that I otherwise wouldn't be able to find or have access to. Um, and it's going to keep some of those results and some of that data within our environment, um, wrapping around some of the data protection and other uh, governance items that we've already got as part of our, our day-to-day strategies and policies. Um, whereas some of the public AI software and components don't necessarily always have some of those same considerations in place. So when we look at how Microsoft 365 Copilot works, um, it's really just an extension of the capabilities that we already have baked into our Microsoft 365 environments today and adding a layer on top that allows us to do deeper analysis, um, look through our, our, our different data points, whether it be Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera, um, and, and give us targeted specific results based on the organization's data that we have access to. You know, I think it's really interesting that you mentioned the tools and apps that we're using every single day. What are the range of tasks Microsoft 365 Copilot can do? Is that is that something you're able to show us? Yeah, um, happy to do a, a, a demonstration here in just a moment. But before I show you, I do want to kind of break it down into what we call our, our productivity loop at Software One. And, and things fall in four main categories um, as far as um, some of the Microsoft 365 Copilot functionality goes. And really, it's it's first looking to analyze things. So um, visualizing data, um, using things like Copilot and Excel um, to, to understand and, and work with our data a little more easily. Um, the second is, is catch up. Um, so when we all go out for, for vacation, for example, we come back and we're not quite sure what's going to be sitting in our Outlook inboxes what Teams messages we may have missed out on, um, what Teams meetings we weren't able to, to join because we were out on vacation. Uh, Copilot can help us catch up on the things that we missed while we were out of office um, and summarize emails, give us the action items, surface some of the most important things to the top so that when we return from vacation, we're able to hit the ground running and action on some of the things that are um, most critical, most important upon our return. Um, same thing in like Teams meetings. I, I know I personally sometimes get double booked and can't be in two places at once. I love Copilot for the ability to go in and, and summarize a, a Teams meeting, um, whether it's action items or a recap. Sometimes I'm going meeting to meeting and join a few moments late, um, being able to, to catch right up on the things that I miss and join the conversation pretty seamlessly um, are all part of some of that catch up um, portion of our productivity loop. We then have enterprise search where we can um, leverage the data that's within our, within our Microsoft 365 tenants and ecosystems and really get rich insights around what data is where and find some of those things that um, sometimes are challenging. I know personally there are times where um, I'll think and I'm like, somebody showed me a PowerPoint that had this specific slide in it or was talking about this specific program. I don't know if it was in my OneDrive, if it was in someone else's, if it was on a team site, if it was in an email. Copilot really can go and, and, and look at all of that and find exactly what I'm looking for um, pretty quickly. And then finally, what I want to kind of demonstrate today is the, the fourth area of that productivity loop is content creation. Um, so we can leverage existing data, drive insights from that, and, and through the process, generate brand new data as part of that, the, the, the generative AI kind of concept of creating something new. Um, based off of some existing data sets. So if, if you're good, LaShawn, I can actually uh, walk through a couple of examples there if we've got a few That's moments. That's exciting. Yeah, I'd be happy to see that. I think I, I, not just me, but we we all want to see, like, let's see Copilot in action. Let's see what it can really do. Excellent. So in my OneDrive here, I have a fictitious company called Fabricam. Uh, if you've been around the Microsoft ecosystem for a while, you probably recognize that name. We, we, we did borrow it. It's uh one of the many companies that is, is not a real company, but um, we, we can pretend it is for purposes like this. But we have a uh, income statement for, for this year, 2024, um, for Fabricam. And if we open that up, we'll see here, it, it's a pretty vanilla income statement. It shows last year um, what our revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit expenses, things that we would look at and, and be like, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Our finance people probably appreciate that shareholders or stakeholders in the organization are probably analyzing that. But at the surface, it's really just line items and, and numbers that are there. 
So one of the things that I want to do is let's role play here for a moment. Let's pretend that I'm the CEO or the CFO of Fabricam, and I have to go and report earnings publicly next week. And I, I get our income statement and I need to go and provide a speech or draft a speech for that. Well, that's where some of the generative AI capabilities of Copilot um, really shine. So let, let's show what that looks like here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually copy a link to this file because I'm going to reference this in a brand new speech file that I'm going to go and create. So I can go ahead and close this out. I'll create a new Word document here. And in this Word document, you'll see that I have the Copilot icon right here. And I can leverage Copilot to help tell me what I want to write. So like I was explaining, I'll say, let's write a speech for Fabricam stakeholders that summarizes the results of the company's 2024 income statement. So you can go as specific as you need to go when working with Copilot or really putting in um, a prompt, if you will, to create exactly what I needed to create. Yes. Yeah, and, and really when we're prompting, the, the, the more specific, the better. Um, sometimes I can prompt and say, you know, I'm the CEO or the CFO of the organization. I don't know necessarily that for this specific one um, that that additional data is gonna be relevant. Mm -hmm. But when I go ahead and, and put the initial prompt in, I'll go ahead and hit generate here. And it's, go ahead, it's going to go ahead and create a draft. Now, once the draft comes back, it's going to also prompt me here and, and ask, are there things that I want to tweak? Are there things that I want to go back and change? So if I look at this, it took some of that content that was in an otherwise you know, benign kind of uh, financial statement, and it went and summarized some of those results. Now, one thing off the bat that I know that I want to have tweaked or adjusted is I'm going to say, you know, put in some headers. Actually, I'll say add headers. I'll, I'll make it a little nicer. <laughs> and I'll click generate here. In Copilot, I'll go and refine the draft and it'll add some headers. So similar to what we saw in that financial statement of breaking down based on a couple different areas, it adds those headers here for, for the speech that we're drafting to provide some of that similar layout. Additional things I can do, and it, it even gives us some examples. We can make it more engaging. I can, I can ask Copilot to make it more formal or um, make the speech longer. <laughs> but it's going to add some additional color or context around um, some of the different areas here. Yeah, we went from 400 to 642 words. Wow. I, I could have used this um, in, in university <laughs> when needing help with <laughs> taking my speech and, and kind of adding those headers. Like that right there just shows you the, the potential of what Copilot can do. How can it take the things that I'm using every day and, and kind of simplify it, um, not just for me, but for anyone in the organization. And, and this is really great. And so the question I have now for you, will Copilot protect any sensitive information? So the, the beauty of Copilot is that it is tied into the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So if we have the governance and protection and security controls in place already around the data that's residing in Teams and SharePoint, OneDrive, et cetera, um, Copilot's going to inherit that. It's not going to surface data that you otherwise don't have access to, and it's not going to natively go and, and, and kind of grant access to people that otherwise wouldn't have access to that data. So um, it's going to keep things like compliance policies, um, and sensitivity labels and things like that in mind is it's both accessing and, and, and creating um, some of that data. Okay, that's that's actually really good to know because it, and that kind of goes into my next question. What's the best way to adopt Copilot in my organization? Like, what, what would be the best way to do that? Yeah, so I, I would say there uh, that really the, the best way to start or, or adopt that would be um, identify either use cases or departments that um, would align some of those use cases where we can get some momentum built and, and get some early adopters, um, champions, if you will, 
where we can get some real end users within the organization comfortable with with Copilot, comfortable with some of the AI technology, and beginning to weave that into some of their day to day tasks, um, building that muscle so that we can then um, realize what the value for the organization is in some of those smaller initial groups that we can then extend and, and, and grow that usage based off of. The beauty of, of kind of the starting point is that every customer is going to be in a little bit of a different spot on their own kind of co-pilot and AI journey. Um, some are, are probably going to start a couple steps before where they're really trying to understand and get their arms around um, what is Microsoft 365 Copilot? What is some of that value it provides? We want to help make sure that there's some of that understanding and interest um, before we start turning on and getting users to um, start using it. Um, it's it's not not a, a a large jump from kind of that point to to the next. Um, but the beauty is is that every organization is going to be in, in a little bit different of a starting point. Um, some may already have those early adopters or those champions identified and using it. And, and how do we expand that? How do we get additional use cases? Um, do we get some extensibility with Copilot where we're leveraging it right now for some of the productivity things, but then can look at some of the other Copilots and um, Copilot Studio, for example, with some, some chat bots and virtual agents. A lot of different entry points on the journey. Um, and the journey is not always linear. It's going to look a little different for every customer. Um, but again, the beauty of that is is in, it's intentionally uh, able where any any customer can start that journey um, with whichever next step makes sense for them. No, that's that's really great, and I, I like how you said that not every journey is the same. Where one customer is, the next customer, or even the next ten customers after that, they're not going to all be in the same place. So, with that being said, how can Software One support? me on my Copilot journey. If I were a customer and I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to look at Copilot. I'm interested. I don't know where to start or I know where to start. How can Software One help me? <laughs> yeah. I, I, the, the first thing I would say there is I would you know, love for, for anyone who's in that position to, to start a conversation with us. Um, we, we would love to help navigate that. Um, but to that point, um, we have entry points and, and solutions that are targeted for many of the different places potential customers could be on that journey. Um, and we have services that can align to that. Um, running the gamut from the initial conversations where we're, we're trying to determine, you know, what is Microsoft 365 Copilot, providing demonstrations, talking through what the value is for, for an organization, um, through identification of, you know, use cases, both in, initial ones that could be low hanging fruit um, all the way through some more advanced ones that we'll, we'll build towards. We have services that can talk about the deep dive planning around what business processes or technology we need to implement and get in line to be able to enable some of those use cases, um, all the way through piloting, deployment, um, and then extension into some custom use cases. And basically, it's not just, hey, we're not just going to start and wait, stop. Like, we're we're going to take you through. It's a journey, right? It's, it's the start and it's the finish. And then what, what else is next? What else is out there? So, Aaron, this was really great. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today about Microsoft 365 Copilot. Um, clear, it gives us a lot of clarity and, and next steps. Like, what else can be done next in terms of, hey, where should we go from here? So, Aaron, thank you so much for joining me. And everybody, again, thank you for joining us. My name is LaShawn. I'm the host and we have Aaron here. Uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to help here at Software One. Well, there you have it. Another solution in our spotlight. We want to thank LaShawn and Aaron and Software One for that presentation. And we appreciate your attendance as well. Until next time, I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review. Thanks for watching. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.